What's up guys? Vlog number seven. Jed Ross and CEO of Rana. We've got a few tips for you. All about Prime Week. So this next week is one of the biggest weeks of the year. It's Prime Week. It usually falls in July. This year they've moved it back and back and back. It's going to be October 13th and 14th. If you're a brand or you're a seller or you're just somebody who's interested in what's going on, there's over 1 million deals available this week on Amazon. For the clients that we work with, it's, it's one of the biggest weeks of the year. And so this is actually Prime Week, not Prime Day. Prime Day is a 36-hour event, so don't be confused. It's actually a two-day event. And we've got five quick tips for you on how to best prepare for Prime Week. Tip number one, make sure your inventory is going at full steam. So your IPI score, your days of inventory on hand, those are your two key metrics to be, to be keeping an eye on. There's nothing worse than running a promo on running out of stock when you wouldn't have run out any, when you would have sold through it anyways. And so why sell through at lower margin? So make sure you're keeping a close eye on your inventory and then make sure you're fully in stock. We're recommending that everybody ship in what they need for the quarter right now. Now there's a few exceptions. If you have oversized items, be cognizant of the fact that Q4 storage fees actually go up for FBA. But first and foremost, we anticipate the logistics are gonna slow down post Prime Week. So right now we're seeing times can be anywhere from a few days up to two to three weeks. After Prime Week, everyone's going to be replenishing because they will have sold through a lot of inventory, which means that Amazon's, especially Amazon's partner carriers, will be even busier. And so if you want to anticipate that and get ahead of it, our first recommendation is make sure you ship out everything you need for the quarter right now or something close to it. At a minimum, take days of inventory on hand up to 45 to 60 days just to give yourself a little bit of an extra cushion to make sure that you don't run out of stock. Tip number two, logistics. Make sure that you're insuring your shipments before they go into Amazon. So with Amazon, we've had a, we've had a couple of folks who have had their shipments lost or in transit. It's extremely painful. Inventory is cash. You don't want to lose cash. And so it's important to make sure that you've got not only your business insurance, but also when you're, when you're inputting your information on the shipment creation for FBA, that you're putting in a declared value. A lot of people put zero in that field or they just put a fake number. Make sure you're putting a declared value. At a minimum, you can put in a declared value of $4,000 per shipment. It won't affect the fees at all whatsoever. And then make sure you check your business insurance to make sure that as a seller or as a brand that you have plenty of coverage to, to update your insurance in case of a lost shipment so that you can recover those funds if needed. It hasn't happened a lot, but we have had several clients who Amazon has lost shipments for or taken a very long time to receive them in. Tip number three, let's talk about promo strategy. Now, most of you probably already have your promos running. If you don't, and if you don't have a structured deal like a lightning deal or a deal of the day or a best deal, then we recommend having them start a day or two early and then running them for a couple days after. The reason why you put those time frames, a lot of times when a deal goes live, it may or may not launch correctly or launch on time or there might be other complications. And so it's always a good idea to have your promos running a day or two earlier that way you have time to like fix something or resubmit if there's an issue. It doesn't matter if you're running coupons, other types of promos, make sure that you give yourself a little bit of a cushion because you can never wind back the clock on time. Also, Prime, day, Prime Week deals usually do really well, which means a lot of times the brands and sellers want to extend them. So give yourself that cushion anyways. You can always cut off a promo early with no penalty if you would like to. But, it's, but it takes time to resubmit. So lengthen your, your promo timelines out, give yourself a little bit of a cushion. That way when you want to extend them, it's just a question of do you wanna cut it off early or cut it off at the time you wanted to. Give yourself a little bit of extra room before Prime Week or before Prime Day and after Prime Day. Tip number four, marketing. So for the marketing strategy, we anticipate that your campaigns will hit their daily budgets quicker and faster. So make sure that you're taking the budget numbers up in terms of ad spend by day. And then there's going to be an insane amount of traffic this week. Every year, Prime Week has outperformed Black Friday the week before. This Q4 is essentially like having two Black Fridays back to back, less than a month apart. That's gonna be good for sales. It's gonna be bad for inventory and logistics. And so we still believe it's an inventory and logistics arms race. But from a marketing standpoint, anticipate a higher cost per click, anticipate that your daily budgets are gonna run out quicker. And there's two strategies. 
if you're a, a, a major company, a big brand, this is a great opportunity to lean in and, and really kind of what we call go hard in the paint, which means be aggressive at your bid levels, take your max A cost targets and take your minimum bid floors up, capitalize on the amount of traffic that's there. Or if you're a small new brand just starting out and you're just launching, or you've got to be a little bit tighter with your allocation of capital and make sure that you get a better return on ad spend. You can be a little bit less aggressive and we like to call it fade the spike. And so, you know, a lot of people, everyone's going to be running a deal. Everyone's going to be more aggressive on marketing. There's nothing wrong with, you know, lowering your bid levels, having a more conservative strategy to generate a better return on ad spend. There's going to be a lot of clicks floating around anyways. And so it's a great time to pick up some of the really efficient ones. So, depending on if you're a large client that wants top line revenue or if you're a small client that wants to be efficient with your ad spend, make sure that as a, as a brand or as a seller that you're being cognizant and planning in advance for your prime week marketing strategy. Tip number five, think of Halloween and Q4 and think of prime week in the context of, of Halloween and Q4. Many people are, are looking only at prime week and they're very myopic. They haven't anticipated the longer receiving times. They haven't anticipated the black Friday, or Cyber Monday promo deals, that cutoff uh, was today. So make sure you get your Black Friday and Cyber Monday promo deals in now. If you miss a cutoff for some of the standard deals, you could always load coupons, always load promos. Make sure you're looking at your Q4 budget and looking at the top total top line numbers for the quarter, the total amount that you wanna spend for the quarter. And then think of Prime Week and Halloween, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas. Think of it all in the context of your Q4 numbers. That way you can plan ahead and that way you don't overspend. We're, we're pulling a lot of the budget forward. So as a percent of marketing spend, most aggressive that we are is we're allocating up to 45% of our Q4 marketing budget in October. The reason why is because in business you can burn money or time or both. That's the principle. Time is the most expensive thing you burn. And so you can, you can always go back and make a case for increasing the budget if you've deployed it well and you've gotten a four, five, six, eight or 10 X and beyond. However, you can never turn the dial back and go back to October and get a redo. And so you want to get a jump on your numbers early. Make sure you lock in like that Q4 volume early because if it's going well, you can always take it up and then make sure you're paying attention to the seasonality. There are seasonal spikes. There's going to, it's obviously 2020 and coronavirus has done some weird things to the numbers for everybody. So don't, don't be worried. If you're a food and beverage brand or seller, make sure that you're not anticipating a massive November, December. It's obviously better to hang up your cleats from Halloween to Thanksgiving to Christmas. Everyone's a fat kid, no one's dieting, and everyone's stuffing their face. And so usually the category is off 10 to 15% each month from what we've seen. And so for food and beverage clients in particular, this is a great time to like save your bullets, save your marketing spend, and then December 15th, to ramp that really aggressively. That way you're in a perfect position post Christmas, whereas everyone else is gonna wake up on the 26th or 27th of December and say, oh, we need to make some adjustments. You'll have made those two weeks early. And then again, can't stress the importance enough of the inventory. Amazon's fulfillment footprint has expanded by 50% just this year. They've opened up 30 new DCs just in the last 60 days. That's, you know, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of square feet. And so with 30 new DCs, 100,000 more workers, there's a lot of new folks on their logistics and supply chain. And so because of that, you want to make sure that from an inventory standpoint that you are just rock solid. Those are our five Prime Day tips. Hope you have a great Prime Week. We'll see you out there. What's up, guys? That's all we got for you. We'll see you on Amazon.